so um, I'll run through a handstand. So, the, you know, one of the first things you need to learn is how to lunge. I mean, mm -hmm. if you don't lunge properly, if you don't start with, you know, straight arms, as soon as you kick up to that handstand, you're going to crash. Um, we, we've all unfortunately seen yes. that. <laughs> or it's like, I can do this. That looks easy. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. There's your arms. Yeah. I mean, it's just a, I try to explain it as like building a house. You're going to build a house straight up and down. You're not going to put your bricks, you know, side to side right. because it's going to fall. One Thank way you. I'm going to steal that. Yes. <laughs> Appreciate it, Becky. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. This is Jared Bass with Mark McCain. You are listening to Triumph Every Day. We discuss the journeys that shaped the lives of our guests and how it brought them to where they are today. Becky Reese. Hey. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Got to hold the microphone a little closer. Okay. There you go. Yeah. All right. Tell us your life story. All right. Go ahead. Deepest, darkest fears. Being in the seat <laughs> right now. <laughs> so Becky's a little nervous, which is normal, but... Again, we only have thousands of listeners, not millions. We have <laughs> literally tens of listeners. <laughs> That's awesome. Tens. I tens like it. Of listeners. But no, in all, in all seriousness, it's normal to be a little nervous. But again, it's just conversation. So okay. don't worry about it. All right. But generally, we'll start off with just tell us a little bit about yourself. Did you grow up in Northern Kentucky? I am actually born and raised in Wilmington, Ohio, okay. which I found out that's where Chris Limo went to college. Fighting Quakers. I did not go to school there. They're the fighting, I think they're just the Quakers now. <laughs> they're Quakers, yeah. But it was the fighting Quakers, they're which pretty, pretty doesn't rough. make a whole lot of sense. Remind me what a Quaker is, isn't it a, a religious? Yes. Like, it's the okay. guy on the oatmail box. And they, I know that. And they, <laughs> and they did not fight. That's just. Which yeah, is the so <laughs> it's uh, like an oxymoron. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, okay. uh, Wilmington, what is that? Like, that's. Uh, it's it's uh, two hours ish. No, it's about an hour. An hour. Yeah. yeah it's, it's it's literally a little bit past between Dayton? here. No, it's on between way here right. and all the way to Columbus. That's right. Yeah. 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 Yep. Get my I'm getting my uh, highways mixed. That's up. where you grew up. That's where I grew up. Um, Any like, again, we we really wanted to do a full hour on the weather, but we'll just touch upon it. Um, any tornadoes in that area? Yeah, there was a bad tornado in I think the late seventies through Zeno, right. Ohio, and it it which is always kind of crazy because you don't really think tornadoes in Ohio as much. But yeah, but that's it's super flat. That it's area right there, flat. I know. Anytime I drive through it, because that's the way I go, kind of back home, I'm like, oh my god, like this wind is yeah absurd. It's wide open spaces, that's for sure. There you go. Wide open spaces. That was your first single on your latest album, yeah. wasn't it? Mm. Yeah. It's a dance instructional video. Oh, okay. She just said uh, Becky did promise <coughs> promise us uh, some dance moves. Yeah, you guys, you guys are gonna watch the video version of this. Yeah, this is um, <laughs> it's actually bourbon in these coffee cups, so it's gonna Great. be a wild. Right. Was uh, that um, Sir Mix a Lot that had the song, or who is that? Oh my God! Yeah, All right, yes, it that, is. that's so. This is her. And this I actually is, have a shirt that says that. This is this Becky. This is Becky. This is Becky from <laughs> this is her. All right, we're going to get to some meat and potatoes. Of this <laughs> All right. Uh, you from, from Wilmington, and then then where'd you go? When did you, when'd you leave home? Because you're obviously here now. I'm here now, um, basically a transplant from um, being married to uh, my husband now of 23 years. Wow. <coughs> Drop what's some it, knowledge what's there. Yeah. What's his name? Phil. Phil Reese. Phil you Reese. guys have the same last name? Phil Reese. That's crazy. That's uh, weird. I, yeah. Only <laughs> on podcasts. <laughs> All right. So you meet, when did you meet Phil and how did you meet Phil? Uh, we actually worked together. That's kind of a scary thought. But, yeah, we worked at a, a semiconductor factory um, in Mainville, Ohio. So we met there. Uh, he felt sorry for me because I didn't have birthday plans and took me out on a date. That's just what he told you. He was he yeah. trying said, to take you. I feel sorry for you. Yeah. Nobody's he's, asking you to go. That's fine. He said that, but I promise you that was his plan all along. <laughs> you fell for it. <laughs> I did. And here we are. <laughs> Not a problem. But, so. Okay. So, and that was, that wasn't, you've been married for 23 years. 
We've been together 23 years, married, uh, let's see, 18. 18, okay. Yep. Um, and then is he from? He is born and raised in Erlanger, Kentucky, which is why I am here. Gotcha. So he, tr he tried to live uh, in Ohio and it was flat and boring. So he wanted to move back home. Yeah, because Erlanger is just the that big e. of <laughs> Erbanger. Excitement. You know what I'm saying? Erbanger. <laughs> I'll have to relay that. I yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. I haven't trademarked that yet. So, <laughs> so um, when did you end up moving moving here then? Because you, you tried to live in Mainville for a little Let's while. See, we, it was uh, actually um, 1999. We built or bought a house together. And then, um, did you party like it was 1999? We actually did. We had a <laughs> kick ass 2000 New Year's Eve party. Y2K, so, the world is ending. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So it, it was, it was a lot of fun. That's so. awesome. Um, so how many children, cause you are a, uh, it surprised me the fact that you're a grandmother. Yes. That you don't look like you should be a grandmother. Actually, I'm, I'm happy to say number six is on the way. That's so. wild. <laughs> you, uh, six what? Puppies. <laughs> oh, puppies. Oh, okay. That makes sense. So, all right. So, how many children do you have? I have three. Okay. Um, my oldest uh, daughter, she's 34. Um, then my next in line, he'll be 31 next month. And Zachary. And then Jacob is, he'll be 18 next month as well. So, I've got two Christmas babies. That's crazy. Yeah. And then. When are the birthdays? Um, March 2nd is my daughter, and then December 26th is Zach, and December 27th is Jake. Let's just hang out that on that for a second. <laughs> what's it like having a kid with – maybe we should call him up and ask him, what's it like having a birthday the day after Christmas? I have actually – we have done very well at keeping them separate. What do you do? Like, What, uh, what like, do you do, Becky? Because my birthday is December 27th. Happy and birthday. It's, it's – this isn't, <laughs> it's not today. So how do you keep them separate? Because I always thought that that was like the biggest pain of like, you get I, all your Christmas presents and then. Nope. They, they are never wrapped in Christmas wrapping. Um, the Christmas tree comes down Mom's the care. night of. Yeah. It's the all relatives the night that of? are like, Hey, the night just of Christmas. I, we always, I mean, there have been a, a year or two in 31 years that the Christmas tree was up the next day. But yeah. God, you're a good mom. <laughs> yeah. I hope they yep. recognize I, that. I like those kids, you know? I hope they recognize that. Well, who do I share a birthday with? The 27th. My son, Jake. He'll be there you 18. Go. He's yep. my favorite. He's my, yeah. <laughs> I can't say that though. Yeah, I can. You can. Yeah. Well, let's, which one, which child is your favorite? Seriously. Don't <laughs> <say>. <laughs> List them in order. <laughs> Let's talk about the grandkids. We'll think of different <laughs> categories. <laughs> All right. And then, so you have, how many currently grandkids do you have? Uh, five. So my daughter has two girls, Meadow and Larkin, and then my son has three boys, Gage, Rowan, and Easton. Mm. Very cool. Yep. I'm in the process of, of picking a baby name right now. It's the hardest thing you'll ever do. I, oh, I, got, tagged, I got tagged in the one like meme it was like you, know, you don't realize how many people you hate until you got to name your baby <laughs> <laughs> That's well like again we're you know i've been married for two years now we're not like pregnant or anything but lauren has already have like you know before we even got married she had her list of names but she's a teacher so oh, wow. all of the names are ruined yeah yes. because of students so i'm like why like where are you coming up with these crazy names yeah. she's like well those are the only ones that are left yeah so <laughs> just know. say baby most a, of, baby most of the girls that lauren picked were like now dated one can't yeah <laughs> <laughs> just can't um so we've got grandkids you've been is your entire family here no my family they actually live in Blanchester, Ohio. Okay. So they also kind of just oddly enough, where Chris's family is from. So you have that weird connection. No. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, they're so grew up in Wilmington. Yeah. He went to college there, and then his parents live in Blanchester. Oh, that's funny. They probably all know each so other. So you had your kids pretty young, because you're like what, like forty ish. Yes. Yeah. Right there. around there. Yep. I was so you had seven. Your first kid at <laughs> seven. But no, no, seriously, you, you had. <laughs> we involved the I don't. With. Yikes. <laughs> I'm trying to do the math, and I'm like, That's, yeah. you had your kids young, right? Yeah. So you don't have to say. That's what but, you do in Webbington, Ohio. But, There's nothing else to do. Yeah. All right. Well. I'm just kidding. Yeah, no. But what was that 
maybe speak a little bit about that. Like you grew up pretty quick. Yep. Yep. It was hard. Um, definitely had, um, a life changing event, Mm -hmm. um, as an adult that is. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So it's like, um, it was kind of cool watching my kids grow up because of the activities that they all Mm -hmm. did. I didn't get the experience. So Mm -hmm. I kind of really enjoyed Mm-hmm. And maybe live vicariously. Yeah. But I mean, I, I'm trying to give you a compliment in that sense of like, you know, I'm from a really small town, and when my uh, friends or whatever, if they have kids at an early age, they might not turn out as well. They might use right. that as like an excuse. It usually they might, tends to go this way. Yeah, that is you know, true. No drive. So what? What do you attribute? I mean, I, I look at you as someone the first time we met, um, someone who. Uh, Oh, this here we go. Is, well, mistake, mistake, <laughs> mistake, mistake me from wrong, Mark. But you're talking about like a little bit yeah. of victim mentality. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, like, you know, like, oh, like you don't, you don't have that. Like, like the world put me yeah. in a situation. No, no. Like, what do you attribute? I guess that to. I decided then. Um, um, I mean, at 15 years old, that's how old I was when I had my first one. Um, I decided then I wasn't going to be a statistic. Mm. So I. To have that Just, maturity that young. Well, well I don't that's, know what that well, is, but... Well, <laughs> perspective, whatever you want to say. And yeah. again, you were you were learning. You were still a kid. Yep. But what, my impression of you is very professional. Oh, thanks. And just a Boy, good all-around person. And, and I think... <laughs> You're professional I think, compared to Mark and I. Yeah, <laughs> that's extremely professional. I'm a lot older than you <laughs> guys Extremely too, so. professional. Um but no, I just, I see someone that's got a good heart for, you know, we'll get into how you're running our kids program now and, and stuff like that. And it's, it's just very, um, obvious that you, you love being around kids. I do. And I I'm do. sure now that you're a grandma, like having these it's little, even better. little yeah. grandbabies around, like it's yep. just, I'm, I'm sure you just love the crap out of them. And uh, <laughs> it's just really cool to see, you know, so, um, I'm not sure if that was, there was a question in there, but more of just a, a compliment to you and, well, thank you. um, you know, I don't know your kids, but I'm sure that they're awesome as well. So I think they are. Yeah. yeah. Um, so now that the, the family's kind of grown up again, so my parents had me at relatively young age mm-hmm. compared to where I'm at now having my first child. Right. Um, I, I always thought it was really cool that being the oldest of four that I can now do things with them as adult to where we're a little bit closer in age yeah. that makes it kind of exciting. Whereas, um, i I have friends who maybe they're the youngest and they waited longer in life and like their, their dads were mom and dads were in their sixties or seventies, Yes, you know, by the time they're now, uh, adult. So, um, what kind of stuff can you do with your kids that, I guess you wouldn't be able to do if, if it was, I mean, there's benefits to, to your situation. You well, know? and yeah. Uh, <laughs> when my daughter and I have ever been out, everybody obviously thinks we're sisters. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, I like it. Go. She probably hates it, but <laughs> no, it, it's, it's fine. Um, but usually, I mean, yeah, I, I totally agree. It's like the shared experiences. It's like, it's more mm. of a, a same age, you know, same generation kind of thing. Mm-hmm. It's, a little bizarre but at the same time it's like i try to be you know that mature person most of the time that doesn't work out but um no we we really have a good time together um lots of family um activities that we'll do together um and i'm able to do those things it's like and that's one reason that i you know enjoy working out with the kids and stuff it's like i've got to do something to motivate myself to be better for my family Mm -hmm. yeah so is that a driving factor for you? It is. It is. Um, I don't want to be that um, decrepit person that can't, you know, we went to the pumpkin patch. I don't want to be the, the one who can't get on to the hayride. I don't want to be the one who can't walk. Get through. your rascal out. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> so what? Know. So where does fitness fall into place for you? Like, where did that start to kind of come into your life? Um, to where I mean we don't have to jump to now but like when when did that kind of thought or maybe just fitness in general start to come in uh I actually started uh gymnastics at nine years old so that's been part of my life your entire life yeah my whole life um and um 
you know, even as a peer, I was a peer coach back in those days. So it's like I w- at 13 years old, I was coaching the younger kids. Mm. So it's like I already wanted, you know, to help other kids at that point just to, you know, learn about gymnastics and, you know, fitness, I guess, wasn't. So well, it, you were you were it's fitness, but it's it's in this this realm of gymnastics. So yes. like, yeah, I guess, yeah, definitely starting there because it usually does start with sport. Yeah. Very few people are. Um, you know, Mark played baseball, I played soccer. It wasn't like we just started working out. Like right. it was a sport and then that turned into something else later right. on. So right. gymnastics was that for you. Yep. And that continued on through how late into your life? <laughs> um, I you actually, still do it now. I do. Yeah. Um, it's not as graceful as it used to be, but you know, it's, it's, it's still there. The passion is still there. Um, I actually, before my uh, youngest was born, I was taking adult gymnastics out at, um, oh gosh, I forget the name of the place, Hot Flight. They had an adult program there. Um, so I was still mm-hmm. working on my skills at that point. Um, and then av- after that, I just kind of let it go to the back burner for a while. And then CrossFit came around about eight or nine years after my son was born. And that's when I started learning about CrossFit. So it was, it was basically gymnastics, a little bit of a, a blank period. And yep. then, yep. okay. Yep. Um, what, where did um, CrossFit kind of start? You know, when did you first hear about it? What drew you to it? What, what was the kind of driving factor behind that? Because I think for a lot of people <laughs> it's, it's, and I don't want to take words out of your mouth, but I know for me it was like, this is this new thing, this new kind of experience that like, had some commonalities between like the sport that I used to play. Right. And I think that was a big, this is a big draw for especially adults who are mildly, even mildly competitive at some point in their life. I feel like there's that, that's one of the big turn ons for people. Mm-hmm. Um, I was actually coaching gymnastics at Silver Lake. Um, and at this point, my son was about four or five years old um, because he went to the kids program there. Mm-hmm. And then obviously, you know, I, got involved there um and at some point crossfit's programming came to Mm -hmm. silver lake the the basement thing yes under Mm -hmm. the pool who matt galster that so matt started that right yeah okay yeah um so that was my introduction to crossfit yeah um and then actually my husband uh went to uh nky for the first time and you know when was that just out of curiosity because uh, we may have crossed paths depending on when it was it's very possible well crossfit <laughs> yeah i mean it's a, it's well, a, there was it's only a very small like two gyms back yes. in the day but back then and, yeah, and nky was, only... was really the only one in northern yes. kentucky and it, it, it was... i was driving from clifton to go there yeah wow. <laughs> and i was driving from over the rhine to go to that to the that NKY, one yeah. wow okay yep so. yeah um so that was, I'm um, trying to think, 2006, 7, 9, 2009, yeah, 2010? 2000, 2008 is basically when I started. And yeah. then 2009, I think, was probably the first time I stepped into NKY. So, yeah. Yeah. Might have been that, that time. So, yep. was he early morning? Yeah, we were both uh, 5 a.m. We, we talked <laughs> about this. We, I guarantee you, we, we at I'm some sure. point, we took like a <laughs> class together. I'm sure. With, I'm sure. With, Good old Lucas. Yeah. <laughs> Be a whole podcast just yeah. on Lucas. <laughs> All right. So, anyways, um, so that that was your kind of first four. What what did you like about it? Um, how to me it was completely different, and I had never lifted weights in my life, so that oh, was yeah. kind of a cool aspect for me. It's like, oh, this is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I was introduced to Turkish get-ups, and that was awful. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Um. But I also liked how it pushed me to do things that I didn't think I could mm. do. Um, with weightlifting, with with lifting in general, because um, again, it's it's not very common that you hear a female say that oh, I really enjoyed the lifting part. Like for like for whatever reason, it's like this. I'm deathly afraid of barbells, and mm-hmm. like you like oh, I really like that part. What do you never tried it? It yeah, and I think that. I don't know what it is about a barbell that people think they're just going to like automatically get like these massive traps or something like <laughs> I, I've been trying forever to I get just really say you're big. You're going to have to work really hard. In I've been trying really hard <laughs> to get big and it just, it's not that easy. So like, I don't know what, it, if there was a thing that like, 
that made you really enjoy that or if it's just the fact that you've never done it before um it i think just how how strong it made me feel like mm-hmm. you know in, in gymnastics obviously you're strong and you're flexible but it's it was a different kind of a feeling of strong I don't did know. you feel like you had a kind of a distinct advantage with the gymnastics background i think that something being you picked flexible up? Yeah. really had um benefited me for for learning yes yeah. well i think body awareness too yes i think that that's yep. something that you can't teach mark and i have been doing this now for for a, you know a decade we've been doing yeah. we've been doing this now for a decade and um we've seen people who come in and just have a knack a knack for like learning and having a knack for like when you tell them to move their right arm they can move their right arm right like mm-hmm. certain people they come through the door where move your right arm and their left leg shakes <laughs> yeah, you know that's true um, so i think to attribute to getting kids into sports at an early age there's a very clear reason why yeah right teaching body awareness not not for the fact of like you're going to be an all-star gymnast and you're going to go to the olympics like it helps you later in life learn new skills right you know it, it, and i definitely think you know i like to focus on the basics when i'm coaching um just for the simple fact most people don't want to work on that mm-hmm. so it's a hard uh you know it's a hard concept for some people um just being like you said body awareness is is huge so yeah you know i, I, like th- I think it's a the, the fundamentals the basics it's like i just took a guy through day one and and uh he was a relatively advanced guy and was able to knock out you know a set of 10 push-ups like which is rare especially when people first come in especially when so, we're asking them to do push-ups correctly yes yeah, yeah. chest do to the ground like, and, right all of yeah, yeah you know and that's that's fine too i mean it's obviously we want to be able to accommodate all all people and, and abilities but um <laughs> So whenever we were going through his day one, I was like, you know, basically I correlated it to basketball. It's like right now, like whenever little kids come in, they play basketball, all they want to do is just chuck the ball up at the, at the hoop. Yeah. It's like, we're going to learn how to dribble. What's you know, that? it's <laughs> like, uh, it's not the, the, you know, the, the sexy side of basketball, but guess what? <clears throat> you can't dribble the ball up the court. You're never going to position yourself to take a good shot. Yeah. So, and that, that's so, so much in fitness in general, right? So many people want to take, you know, start at the three point line. Like I played basketball, our coach, we weren't allowed to shoot three pointers and warm ups. You had a all inside and you had to start in the paint and you had to make so many shots inside the paint and then you can move out. So many people want to come in and take these half court shots, mm-hmm. right? Cause they look cool. Right. And I think, you know, CrossFit kind of went through that evolution and we're still going through it with this open and things are changing now a little bit. So many people want to come in and go right to muscle ups. Yeah. So many people want to come in and go right to body weight snatch. Mm-hmm. And it's like, guess what? We need to teach the air squat. Mm-hmm. We need to teach. And that's one of the things I'm trying to full circle why gymnastics I think are so important at an early age because yeah. you can create that body awareness and that's what people need. They don't need to be going to the pitching coach and the hitting coach at age five. Like, right. let these kids Learn. develop, you know, and by develop, I mean create body awareness, mm-hmm. basic stuff, you know, we're not loading them um, at, a, at a super early age uh, until they're ready. Yeah. Um, and speaking of, maybe, because um, you, you said it, it, you were coaching kids, you know, 13 years old, yeah. and then um, taking a little bit of a break, where does the, where is the, the teaching come back into play in your life. So you're maybe you're doing CrossFit now. Where does that teaching aspect come back in for you? I, um, when I was um, back to Silver Lake, so, you know, obviously raising kids in my early 20s, um, you know, so then um, I guess my 30s come around and that's when I got back into coaching. And it, it's pretty much been on since then, you know, at CrossFit, at CrossFit and at Silver Lake and, you know, all of that. So, so what kind of stuff are you, are you teaching the kids? So you're, it, and it's gymnastics, right? So, <laughs> so we're clear, right? You're, it's just straight gymnastics class for, for the most part at Silver Lake. At yes. Least. Yes. Okay. That's the, the, yeah, the teams. And then also, you know, just uh, basic classes. So, you know, the stretching, the, the basic skills, the, the cartwheels, the front rolls. What are that. some of the, the basic skills that you would learn? Because, again, we, we say gymnastics, and it's not gymnastics. Like, our highest skill gymnastics is muscle-ups, handstand walks, and, right. you know, like some of these 
and, and for lack of a better term, they're party tricks when it comes to yep. actual gymnastics. Right. Uh, they're not to say they're easy. They're they're very difficult, but they are really just party tricks. A muscle up is how you get on the rings to do a higher skill movement. Exactly. A a handstand walk is you know part of a handspring, which is part of you know these higher it, it level evolves. things. So, yes. what kind of stuff are you teaching um, specifically that like kind of create that body awareness? So um, I'll run through a handstand. So, the, you know, one of the first things you need to learn is how to lunge. I mean, mm -hmm. if you don't lunge properly, if you don't start with, you know, straight arms, as soon as you kick up to that handstand, you're going to crash. Um, we, we've all unfortunately seen yes. that. <laughs> or it's like, I can do this. That looks easy. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. There's your arms. Yeah. I mean, it's just a, I try to explain it as like building a house. You're going to build a house straight up and down. You're not going to put your bricks, you know, side to side right. because it's going to fall. One Thank way you. Or the I'm going to steal that. Yes. <laughs> Appreciate it, Becky. Thanks for the coaching Building tip. a house. We're going to end the podcast now. Yep. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, but yeah, just the basic skills like that, you know, squeezing your body, being aware of, you know, pushing through the shoulders. Um, mm -hmm. There's just so many little things that create that stack in a handstand to where you can hold it mm -hmm. and then you know once you're up there you can you can start moving on to other things or uh are kids or adults easier to teach that's a tough question it depends on the day i guess yeah <laughs> uh, i can definitely adults, see it adults like to think that they can do more than mm. they can and kids are kind of the opposite so you have to you have to coach them and, and encourage them you can do this, you know, just give it a shot, you know, where adults, it's like, okay, you need to stop. Yeah. <laughs> Don't right. do that. Yeah. You've fallen three times now yeah. and your nose is bleeding. Yeah. <laughs> Please stop it. Yeah. I got, I'm definitely not an EMT. <laughs> okay. Um, so now with the, with the gymnastics part of it, and now you have this interest in CrossFit, how do you kind of intermix those two to make it? So I've seen you coach the kids class here and it's been a really big, really big success. And I know the kids absolutely love it. Um, what kind of things are you doing to kind of keep them engaged, kind of keep them learning new skills? Uh, Cause when we first sat down to talk, you know, about developing this class, that was a big thing. It's not just like, you're not going to teach these kids how to snatch. You're going to teach them, you know, how to do a handstand, right. how to do, you know, some of these movements that are, um, they're basic, but they're they're really important for them to learn correctly. Right. Um, so it, in the kids class, I, I try to you know incorporate the stretching because they definitely need to you know learn stretching. It's it's amazing how many kids sit so much that they you know when it comes to stretching they they can't even touch their toes. Mm, yeah. You know from a sitting even from a sitting you know pike position or standing to touch their toes. It's because of you know them sitting and and not being. Um, stretching properly um or enough or just um, being active in general just probably. being active yeah, yeah absolutely because um, i feel like all, most kids are like made of rubber and then there's like a certain day where everything turns to stone <laughs> I, I'm, I'm you know it's like i remember it's like being start. a kid and it was like you could fall mm -hmm. out of a tree and bounce and you'd be like oh are you dust your shoulder do you off? follow any of like the kelly strat stuff where he's trying to get kids uh standing desk at schools and stuff like that no but that would be awesome yeah that's that's basically kind of his his so to answer your question like jared it's it is true right i was watching the kid that came in last night that could barely get past his knees which is you know again it's fine you don't know what you don't know right. especially when you're that young right but you know you think about it these kids are in school for i don't, I don't know how many hours a day six seven six, hours seven a day hours a day mm -hmm. and they're just sitting down and probably with poor, poor posture and right again at that age it's probably really hard to have the awareness like you know tommy sit up straight and he's like oh well, you know whatever I am. yeah exactly <laughs> I, I actually learned something the other day that um the recess that you'd get mm -hmm. isn't necessarily for the kids to have a break it's the mandatory time the teachers need for the midday like wow. they they're supposed to like per whatever law like they need mm -hmm. like this break in the midday oh, wow. so like you think about like even even that part mm -hmm. isn't necessarily like structured of like no oh, it's activities. for the kids to have you know right. it's like so the teachers have a break it's not mm -hmm. like based around the child's needs yeah you know? so yes to, to add to your point like mm -hmm. there there needs to be this better i think people are getting there right like the, you're seeing these states 
start to start school earlier because they know that like like stop forcing a kid to get up when he still needs to rest or she needs to rest. Yeah. You so mean you start school later. You said earlier. Early, yeah. Later. That's what I meant. Yeah. Start Good school catch. later. Uh, I, I wasn't sure. <laughs> no, no. They're starting school know. later because they need Cause to I, rest. I think it's kind of silly too because it's like, you know, the bus comes through my neighborhood at like 7 in the morning. And I'm like, good yeah. Lord. There's like, a one on Turkey Foot that was 625. Yeah. I mean, there it's like go. getting picked up for school that early, like it's it i mean again it's not it's it's a scientific fact they've proven it now that like a developing brain needs to sleep more right you know? and these kids aren't going to bed at eight o'clock at night exactly no. <laughs> well they may be going to bed but they're yeah, not Becky, going to yeah. sleep you until 11 or 12 for that. <laughs> exactly but i think we're so. figuring some things out because you're seeing some smell of stuff in regards to even like naps in schools right. and and you know there's schools now that have like sleeping pods and doing different things and hopefully obviously kids aren't going to abuse these types of things like oh you know um, i need another nap like yeah. it's, it's your third one today yeah <laughs> let's let's move on. do your homework but so. mandatory play and and even i've seen some schools that have had a, a, a real bad like violence like fighting and stuff like that yeah that are doing meditation i've seen and, that yeah mm-hmm. and it's and, and even cooler you got someone like um you know jeremy collins who's a baseball coach over at dixie yeah. just got his crossfit level one that's yeah. awesome. I know Connor through, has that through too. the school, which is, mm-hmm. I mean, it's that's pretty, really awesome. it's pretty cool. And I'm not saying that again, that CrossFit mm-hmm. is the answer to everything, but to have this little bit wider view of what fitness and health, like it used to be fitness and health and sleep were these separate things, you know, mm-hmm. and now they're like all, all three of them together, you know, add nutrition and like all yep. these things are all intertwined and it, it yep. has mm-hmm. to be this kind of roundabout approach rather than just like separate entities so uh, getting a little bit off topic i do want to go back to uh talking about you know kids and fitness and and how you kind of develop people uh and these and these little ones maybe for later on in life yeah so um when you look at something like a crossfit kids program uh or kids fitness program in general um what outside of gymnastics things what other kind of things are you working on with them uh, definitely, um, you know, the cardio aspect of CrossFit. So, you know, as much as kids hate burpees, they actually mm-hmm. like them <laughs> because <laughs> I think they hate them so much. They're like, okay, we're going to do this. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, trying to play um, fitness games that will keep the kids, um, you know, engaged and, mm-hmm. and not really figuring out that they're actually working out. You're kind of tricking out. them in the I'm working tricking out. them. Yeah. It's all a mind game. <laughs> So what we do. I mean, I know I I tell people all the time when whenever they come through here for the first time, you know, uh, I always one of the things I use is is we we trick you into working out. You know, you're really gamifying things. You're you're, you realize that like, wow, this is difficult, but it's I'm doing it with these other people and it's it's more engaging. It's not just me with my headphones in trying to finish this little workout. Right. You know, Um and once you're here, you don't really have a choice. You know, you're kind of <laughs> just get through the yeah, door. Just get through. Yeah, get you're through trapped. The door. Like a podcast. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I think I think that is really important. And then I watch I watch them just genuinely have fun. I think so. I mean, if, you know, it, as long as I see them laughing and and you know having fun, and you know, we'll take breaks when I I kind of you know gauge their, um, you know feeling how they're feeling and everything it's like you know if they need a break then we'll take a small little break it's like i I just try to do what i think i you know i feel coming back from them um for yeah let's do more or Mm -hmm. you know this was fun or you know this wasn't fun it's like okay let's let's do that there was a time uh actually not long ago i i you know had my program for the the class and one of the little guys had a terrible day at school terrible day at school and and it's just like okay we're not doing this we're going we're mm. going to do something else and we're going to just have fun and and get through this and let you relax for the this that time. is uh super 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 important because and we do it with adults where you can just tell like body language is like you yeah. have to be able to read it and some days you can just tell someone's having an off day mm-hmm. and you know and you go over and you're not asking them deep questions but it's like Hey, why don't you just go do X, Y, Z instead? Or, you know, why don't you just let's, Hey, let's take the weight down. Or maybe it's a day like, Hey, let's internalize that 
that bad day and let's PR on this, this back spot or something, you know? So like being able to read that, um, is is super important. I think that it really does help, uh, especially with kids too. Right. I mean, you know, they have bad days just like we do, Exactly. you know, and, and, and kids, kids can be jerks to each other, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's important to make sure that, you know, they can vent through you know their frustrations too Mm -hmm. so if that means you know we're having a a class of just playing tag or you know Mm -hmm. playing you know kickball or or soccer whatever the case may be that's what we're going to do i mean i do have a plan you know and and we'll we'll try to stick to that plan but i'm okay i think that's you know it's one of those things too you know with adults and kids as far as what keeps them coming back yep like is it is it fun like yeah i mean if you get the best work out of your life every single day but the coach is you know a a hole and and it just feels like drudgery and right nothing's ever good enough like you know da 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 like you gotta mix in some fun you gotta be able to get on a personal level with people Mm -hmm. it's just customer service 101 and in kids it might not be as obvious that like hey we're you know in the customer service business um but ultimately you have to be able to read a room yeah and then guess what you have to be able to adjust Yep. And those are all things you just talked about. So that's, yep. again, what makes up a good coach. Yep. Awesome. Um, speaking of, what, uh, where can everybody find the kids' class? So the Triumph Troops class. So the Triumph Troops, um, right now we do them in session. So um, we will, you know, advertise that on the Triumph page, the, the Facebook page. Um, there is a private tri triumph troops page um that as you know we get new kids you know i'll make sure that the parents are in that page um and then i'll also post um an instagram um yep triumph 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 troops Troops nky NKY. yep Mm -hmm. that's our uh our instagram page for that yeah uh and that is currently it's monday and wednesday yep right 6 30 to 6 30 to 7 30 p.m um so it's based on a punch card, so if you guys have, you know, anybody that wants to, to kind of hang out on the Monday and Wednesday, uh, just let myself, Mark, Becky, any one of the coaches know, we'll yep. get you squared away. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. You just use a punch card and show up whenever you wish. That's right. Becky punches them out. Uh, it's a great time. I mean, I, I've watched I've watched those kids back there have a, a phenomenal time. Good. Just enjoying it. So I hope I hope that uh, we can keep keep them coming back. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, well, thank you so much for facing all your fears. It wasn't that bad, right? <laughs> no? <laughs> wow. Yeah, it was, no, it was, it was great. Uh, it was no, awesome. She hates us. She doesn't even like me. I do here. not. That's for sure. Well, thanks for showing up today. No problem. I appreciate it. <laughs> thanks and for having me. Thank you all for listening to Triumph Every Day. Subscribe on YouTube, iTunes, and everywhere your favorite podcasts are found. To find us at triumphstrength.net, on Instagram at triumphstrength, and Facebook at facebook.com slash triumphstrength. Thanks, guys.